Today, all over the world, religion is used as a pretext for violence. What can we do to foster a culture of peace? I think today we don't realize, we don't think of the nonviolent option as a feasible option in our day-to-day -day lives or even in our foreign policy. The same way that soldiers have to train for war, if you train, you have to train for nonviolence. Hello everybody, and welcome to the 2005 Gandhi King season for nonviolence. 45 years ago, no one would have imagined teenagers participating in a noonday conference at the United Nations. But the world is changing. So why do we continue making the same mistakes over and over again? The Temple of Understanding has brought these young people here, inspired and empowered them to act. We must take action, it must be decisive, and it must have an eye, an eye to sustainability. That is our responsibility. Forty-five years ago, Juliet Hollister began the Temple of Understanding to start a dialogue between the world's secular and religious leaders. Juliet Hollister was the kind of person who knew everybody, brought everybody together, embraced everyone and everyone's perspective, and just felt that the answer to world problems, uh, the road to peace, was to bring the religious leaders of the world together. We have all these various experiences that take the form of an organized religion, but at the heart of them all, we're saying that man is a spiritual being, life is a spiritual journey, and that we are interrelated, interconnected. Today, it is hard for us to remember how guarded and delicate these gatherings may have been. But out of them came leadership into a more enlightened era of spiritual thought we can all access, no matter what our religion. Buddhism for me, best, but that does not mean Buddhism is best for everyone. For my Christian brothers and sisters, the Christianity is the best. My Muslim brothers and sisters, the Muslim tradition is the best. All have great potential, same potential, to create a good human being, warm-hearted person, sensible person. Eleanor Roosevelt saw Juliet's vision as a spiritual United Nations. Today, the Temple of Understanding strives to bring an interfaith perspective to the United Nations as an NGO consultant to the UN Economic and Social Council. Sister Joan Kirby represents the Temple of Understanding from her office at the UN. Okay, would you call the Temple of Understanding? The member states at the UN are always saying, how are we going to know whose voice to listen to? And so when we form coalitions of like-minded NGOs, it's far more effective. So I work mainly with the religious NGOs and with the uh, Committee on Human Rights. In June 2005, the Temple of Understanding co-sponsored the Conference on Interfaith Cooperation for Peace at the UN with member states, UN departments, and other religious NGOs. This Conference for Interfaith Cooperation for Peace was almost like the fulfillment of Juliet's dream for the Temple. It was a major step forward in um, having religious contribution recognized as important at the United Nations. Religious people must awaken and go back to their deep root to find something to share with the others. But the real work of religion, if you go and see the, the founder's message, is that bring their love, bring their compassion and wisdom so people can live better. Uh, with the cross? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Temple of Understanding educates seminarians and professionals through its co-sponsored program, Spiritual Journeys, an experiential approach to religious diversity training. This is a hands-on opportunity to experience eight religious traditions in the New York area and to learn how to engage religious difference and conflict. 
the whole purpose of the letter understanding, temple of understanding, is to understand, not necessarily to agree. Four years ago, the Temple of Understanding initiated the Consultation for Interfaith Education to build a network of educators and create a culture of peace. In Barcelona, participants focused on the issue of violence in the name of religion. It's the obligation of all religious people, especially those who are concerned about how their religion is being misused to promote violence, to learn more about other religions. When the question was asked, how is it that in moments of conflict, only a minority comes to the rescue, and a majority is passive, and another minority collaborates, then the studies show that the ones who come to the rescue have had education with compassion. We cannot do business as usual. If we had to fight with our fists, all right. But if we had to fight with atom bombs, there is no matter of the future. We have touched the bottom line. And that is my occasion to be optimistic, that we cannot go as we were go going. And that is precisely but I feel the responsibility of religions to go to the deepest origin and source of the human being and discover a new style of life. This is about HIV AIDS. The Temple of Understanding is mentoring youth for their role as global citizens. Companies room three. Sister Joan offers young people summer internships at the UN. That's my hope, that, that these young women will be touched in their hearts by the humanitarian issues that concern the United Nations, and so that they will possibly be public servants, get into um, some sort of public service as they get older, when I'm long gone. Why didn't I not fly back after I was forced down a flight of stairs? I, I think it's obvious I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> the Temple of Understanding's youth program, Dialogue in Action, moves beyond knowledge to offer a transformational experience of each other's religions. We have Jains and Muslims, you know, Christians and Jews and, you know, Buddhists and Sikhs all sitting around, you know, visiting other places of religious practice and kind of discussing their ideals. And, you know, you really see how all religions really do encompass this idea of how do we create peace. But we all have our different paths of, of you know, attaining that. Last year, the Temple of Understanding's Youth Council took up the environment as a focus for their work. They drew inspiration from the life's work of Nobel Peace Prize laureate Wangari Matai. We formed a group at the National Council of Women, and it was the first group of what was to become 6,000 groups. And on the 5th of June, 1977, we planted the very first seven trees, which we had to become the first trees of the 20 million that they now count. Youth Council members also sought out role models closer to home. This past year, we defeated an application to put a 520 megawatt power plant in our neighborhood. It would have been the size of three football fields. We won because we believed in our power.